Man, um, it definitely feels amazing, but it, um, it's crazy that the more I grow, the more I just realize uh, different things, and I, I look at things different ways. Like, <clears throat> man, that, that Grammy came from a, a song that I didn't even put, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was Ye and Jay that really put the final soul into that song, but like, I haven't even had that opportunity yet to for people to hear my music, even as a producer, as an artist, uh, even like just the new music I'm making, man. Like, I feel like I'm going to win multiple Grammys off of, man. Like, I just feel like I'm so connected with it. So I'm so proud of uh, <clears throat> that niggas and parents Grammy, but what's coming next, man, I, I know it's just a, that was a stepping stone. Now speaking of the music that you have been making, it's been a great year, not just for you, but you know, for Audio Push, for, for Kay Roosevelt, you know, everybody that you just surround yourself with, especially for the HS87 crew. Yeah. So, um, you know, a few weeks back, you know, uh, we had Audio Push at the, the Who's Next show in New York. Yeah. And you know, it was, it was a big turnout and Definitely. Shine's been getting a lot of uh, burn. Shout out like to that. Hot, you so, know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, the making of Come As You Are and, and yeah. you know, just how, you know, you really got to put your, your real executive producer hat on for that project and just to see how yeah. much it's grown since then. Crazy to have known them from day one and I was the person that told them to be a group and it's crazy. We never like, we always went in, we will do two, three records here and there, but I never did a project from top to bottom, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And <clears throat> it finally got to the point where it was like, we were in a great space, like I was finally like in a stability, like a stable situation where I could focus, you know what I'm saying? Then we got the opportunity to go on a tour with Wayne and uh, we had a studio bus, man, by the grace of God, it came through, shout, shout out to G-Pen, they put up some bread to help us get that, you know what I'm saying? So when we got on tour, man, like it was just crazy seeing life, like people are really out there just to enjoy that music. They don't care what's happening behind the scenes, how much, whoever getting paid, like they out there just to have a good time. And that really put uh, fire back into to me, you know, as a music maker. <clears throat> uh, just having the opportunity to work on music every day while you get to see all of these people, all these things going on, man, it was a blessing. And we put every minute we had, like when we was, when we, got on stage we went straight off to the bus back to recording again man it was like just work 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 you know what I'm saying and I'm proud of that joint. Now do you think you, know, you, you touched on it a little bit but you were talking about how you know the fans don't care what's going on behind the scenes they just want yeah. to come and have a, have a good time and listen to the music and enjoy themselves exactly. so um you know was there a time that you kind of felt like the behind the scenes stuff was getting away that when it came to making music or, or producing music? Or? I, I definitely think so because mm -hmm. um just being on the internet a lot and you know sitting behind that keyboard all day you start to get a different perception of what's really going on in life because that's not real it's just a bunch of people just getting off their negative thoughts and all this bs you know what i'm saying like just being out in the world man like that's really what it's about like i'm here to inspire people that's what i like i remember making beats for my very first beat till the beat i made last night if if you're around, I'm gonna pull you into the studio and listen to it because I want you to hear what I'm doing. I really love music. It's about the music and I want people to feel what I'm feeling, you know what I'm saying? So uh, definitely that that tour, like working on that album and just where, where we at right now, man, like I'm feeling so blessed. I feel like a new producer. I feel like a new artist, a new music maker because my eyes have been open to so many things. Mm. Now, a lot of people have been saying that your growth, not just as a producer, but as an artist has been pretty easy to track lately. You know what well, I mean? Like it's not, you know, it's, it's not so much of a surprise when we hear you rapping anymore to, to some people. So um, tell us about your, your new music and stuff you've been working on and, yeah. you know, what can we expect out of it? Like, especially, you know, talking about what you just talked about with getting those negative thoughts out of you, yeah. especially reading internet comments and, mm -hmm. you know, going on tour. So tell me how that's inspired the new stuff you've been working on. Um, my new stuff was totally inspired by me just uh, stripping everything down and being like, I'm going to just be me. I'm going to say... Uh, what I'm feeling, the things I've always wanted to say is crazy. Like, I, it took me so long to tap into uh, getting the perfect marriage between my beats because my beats was trumping my raps at first, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. And then, like, it's been catching up. And uh, now I've, I finally uh, got it to the point where I can tell the, the real stories that I want to tell because I can fit into the beat properly and shit, you know what I'm saying? Before I was just throwing whatever words I could together to just try to make it flow, you know what I'm saying? But now, um, 
they gonna get the real me with my project, man. They gonna get to learn about my background and what I'm on, where I'm thinking, and where I'm trying to go too, man. I want us to all uh, make better music, man. Like I'm, I'm, I'm paying attention to every detail, like with my music, man. Like from the second it starts till it ends, like I want you to feel something. I want it, I want it to change. I want it to feel like what music used to be like, man, because <clears throat> we don't even have to rewind now because you know the format of the song. Like when the, the song come out, ain't gonna be no change in the second verse, maybe a snare drop or something, but I'm talking about having real depth in the music and uh, live instruments and just using new techniques that me and my partners, uh, Hayes Banger, Ray Real, the whole fam, S. Dot, been coming up with over here at HS87. So the music is, a, I think it's about to surprise people. Mm, now a lot of the music, um you, you, you mentioned this a little bit before. You said, you know, your beats were just so hard and you were just trying to find something just to, just to rhyme with it over. Yeah. Do you think, you know, in hindsight, with, with the success of, you know, the Good Music Project and the Niggas in Paris and all that type of stuff, yeah. would you have, might, might have wanted to do your, your rap career differently and maybe, maybe mature a little bit more as a lyricist since the beats were so, like, out Man, of this world at that time? I was just so excited. To, to, to finally be in a light where people were paying attention to what I was doing that mm -hmm. I was anxious to get it out, you know what I'm saying? And just, you know, I feel like I needed that. I definitely know I needed that, you know what I'm saying? I mm -hmm. needed to, to put some stuff out there that didn't wow the people, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, I'm going to appreciate it the next time I put some shit out that I know is cold, you exactly. feel me? Like, period. So, um, I'm all about growth. I'm, I don't care about, you know what I'm saying, what nobody say. Like, they're going to they gonna see the growth of nothing else. Okay, all right, now, you know, other than, you know, your, your work as an artist, you've done some amazing productions with, with guys like Hove and Drake and Beyonce in the, in the past couple of years and stuff like that, so, you know, when trophies first leaked on the, on the, on the trailer, you know, people was going nuts for it, and yeah. then it didn't make the album, and then they played a snippet of it at the Barclays Center, and then it didn't come out until, like, New Year's Eve and shit like that. And we saw all the all the behind the scenes pictures with you and Drake yeah. and all that type of stuff. Did that kind of like did it frustrate you as a man? Like, yo, why is it not an album? When's it coming out? Like Frustration is an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, but it's love, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I got respect for Drake, man. He knows what's best for him. Like he been dictating his career from day one. So I'm not gonna come in and be like, you gotta use this song, cause you know what I'm saying? He had worse behavior, he had some other joints that was smacking, and now it's the, it's time for trophies to, you know what I'm saying? tear these niggas apart. <laughs> Period, Floyd Blake, it's out. I'm just happy it's out. And you know what I'm saying? I'm proud of uh, like the new flows on that shit, the new timing with that horn and shit. Like, man, we we changing it up. It ain't the same, man. Mm -hmm. Like, straight up. How was how was those sessions you, you were, the, those Drake sessions that you had? Amazing. We, uh, me and um, Price from Audio Push, uh, we went up to um, Toronto, man, and we just kicked it, really. It was, it was a fan vibe, like we, was in the studio, but we was kicking and we was going out, man. It was, uh, he made sure we were straight, to say the least, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so shout Drake, you know, it, it was a dope time. Okay, all right, how about, um, there's rumors about the song called The Boy with Casey Veggies and yourself and Drake. Do you know the yeah. origins of that, or is that gonna man, see I don't the light know. of day? I, I know it bang, but I don't know nothing else about it. <laughs> <laughs> perfect, perfect. Now, you, you played you played a, a good amount of your album for me in the, in the back before, and, it's, it's crazy. I can't wait for people to hear it. Right. So, um, you know, tell me a little bit about, uh, you know, you know the, the people that you worked with on the album. I know I, I don't want to say anything that, you know, you don't, you're not ready Man. to release. Them, yeah, but. I mean, I don't, I don't even want to go like into detail right now about the, uh, like, you know, the features and none of that, but definitely work with people who have been inspiring me for 10 plus years, you know, before I even thought I could make music at this level. I used to be so frustrated trying to figure out how to put it together. I used to be so pissed at Kanye when I played <laughs> my songs and he tore them down like he just, but man, I, I thank him for that, man. Like that was uh, that was great because I, I wouldn't have this mindset now, you know what I'm saying? Like I, he really showed me a lot about structuring songs and, and, and making things hit you in a different type of way and shit like that. So, man, this new music, man, like <laughs> I, it's, it's finna go down. Man, so you used up. to play Kanye and stuff with Kanye and being a perfectionist, he used yeah, to tear man, it up, say. Yeah, he just knew and definitely, man, I know the raps wasn't there, but at the time I thought maybe I was doing all right and shit, but it just wasn't ready. But man, hit story chapter two, man. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Can't wait to hear that. Definitely. Well, I can't wait for the people to hear that. Yeah. Um, now, Alert's been tearing up uh, LA lately. You yeah. know what I mean? We just heard it on Power 106 when I was walking in here and I was yeah. like, 
Wow, shout out to Yessie. Shout out to Belly, the whole team up there. Exactly. I think it was Disco Dave. What was it? Disco Dave's name? I Disco it Drew. Too? Disco Drew. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So um, tell me how, how, how uh, Alert came about. I know, you know, Man. you said the, the real hook on it is, I mean, feel the shit since the chronic. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? What, what, is, what is the shit that we haven't felt Man, since the chronic? Man, listen, I'm a, I made that song trying to give it to Dr. Dre, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and um, he came and he really liked it, you know what I'm saying? But it just, I guess it wasn't just fitting where he was at right now. And I felt like it was an urgent song. And, and you know, uh, Nipsey just came through just on some kick it. I played the song and he just wrote an incredible verse to it. So mm -hmm. I put a verse to it and uh, people liked it. And I sent it to Yessie, not even, I wasn't trying to get it on radio. I was just, I wanted her to hear it because I really feel like it makes you feel it some type of way, you know what I'm saying? Just like with the musicality of it. And um, she asked me, cause she played it the next day on the radio. And since then, it's been playing almost every other day. It's crazy. Mm. Nice, nice, nice. Now, um, wow, yeah. Like, like I said, uh, you know, the song alert. It, it's been it's been getting a lot of buzz out here and a lot of production. The production's kind of crazy on it. Yeah. Uh, you said you wrote this for Dre. Like you wanted Dre to get on it, or you produced it for right. Dre to get on it. Um, what were those sessions like? Like, what was... it, it, it really was just a quick idea that came to me, to be honest, man. But I felt like it was so, it was so current, you know what I'm saying? But it was so nostalgic at the same time. Like, that's why, I, like, it, the song really just put itself out. I promise, like, we made the song and a week and a half later or a week later, it was on the radio. So that was one of them joints that just wrote itself. I got the inspiration from my homie Fuzzy. He just wanted to bring Dre by, nothing serious, but I just wanted to have an idea on deck just mm -hmm. to play for him and he ended up liking it but you know what i'm saying it just wasn't fitting where he was going right now and I, it just came together wherever he's going you feel me? i mean detox ever comes out yeah, I mean, you know. wherever he's going with that but yeah um all right so let's talk a little bit about um you know just uh the people that inspire you especially as an artist um you know the last couple of years you've been the go-to guy when it's come to, mm. to big albums that's crazy like, anytime an albums come out like uh -huh. If your name is on the production credits, like all right, let's <laughs> let's see what's on this one. So, how does it feel, especially with the with the up and coming guys, like the audio pushers, the Casey Veggies, the you know those type of guys? How does it feel to be? It's amazing, man. I, uh... I never like knew I could be that guy, you know what I'm saying? Because I wasn't looking to make niggas in Paris. I just was a kid who loved making different types of beats and experimenting, and it just happened to be one of them joints, you know yeah. what I'm saying, or whatever. But man, like I, I feel like people haven't even experienced a quarter of me musically, man. And for it to already be here and winning Grammys and people showing love like this, man, I feel like it's endless possibilities for the future, man. And I'm just trying to use my powers for good and continue to put on, man, and, and make incredible music with my peers. Now, speaking of your peers, uh, James Fontaine is up for a ton of Grammys. Yeah, that's right. Um, you know, this year. It's a name that may not be immediately uh, uh, recognizable. It to should be people, though, James Fauntleroy. <laughs> Remember that guy. <laughs> exactly. He, you know. So tell me about y y your relationship working together. He's been on your first project. Man. You've been on his. You know what I'm saying. Crazy. And he's Man, an listen, incredibly yo. talented songwriter. <clears throat> James is my dude. I, I knew him since uh, like '06. You mm -hmm. feel me? We met at Tyrese's studio out in Hollywood. Wow. And, um, <laughs> man. He was working with, I mean, he's still working with 1500. He is 1500, but I met all them dudes up there. Yeah. And from the time I met him, he was writing incredible songs, doing, make, coming up with incredible flows and melodies. And I just was like a super fan, man. Like since day one, I used to be like eye chatting this dude every other day, like <laughs> trying to just like, can I get a session in with you, man? Like I used to YouTube his music, like, and just listen to it, like, but. We just became cool and shit, you know what I'm saying? Just over the years and we just started making music and everything came naturally. Like um, when I went out to the Hamptons with B and stuff like that, I, um, I told her like she should bring James out there and you know, that's how they ended up getting mm -hmm. it rocking. I mean, mind you, they had already worked before, but I just came out there and was campaigning. Like that's my guy. Like I feel like he's one of the most talented people like on earth, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So. Definitely. Now, you know, you mentioned working with B and, you know, how that, you know, the the the, uh, the rollout of the album has been incredible and a yeah. lot of people have been like, 
you know, saying that it's changed the music industry. Like, did, did you even know that the album was going to come out like that? Or, you know, what no was... No clue. Listen, I was in the <laughs> studio making new music. My DJ came upstairs to my studio and was like, Beyonce just dropped her album. I'm like, what? <laughs> you feel me? I hop on iTunes. I see it's real. We go nuts. Go downstairs. We watch it on the TV. Just going crazy. Yeah, no idea champagne. about the video. No idea nothing, about nothing. Like nothing, man. It's crazy. And uh, just feeling blessed to be a part of it, man. Like it's crazy. We was there and I ain't gonna get into that. <laughs> you feel me? But yeah. I hear you. Yeah, yeah. So, um, what, what's the future of HS87, the the crew and the label? Man, HS87, B Mac. N.O., Audio Push, K. Roosevelt, Hip Boy, B. Care, Ray Real, Hayes, S. Dot, you feel me? The whole fam, Kent Money. Like, we working, man. Like, I'm trying to put albums out, you feel me? Like, real solid, put together, well thought out albums. And I'm trying to do it versus putting out mixtapes, man. I don't want to really put out mixtapes. I want to sell this music, man, because, like, we put too much effort, too much work into it. And I know everybody's putting every ounce of genius they have in, into it, what we doing. So putting out these fly clothes, man, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Everything we got going. Like I know everybody's putting every ounce of their genius, every, you know, blood, sweat and tears we, we putting into this music. So we just about to, I feel like take over the world in all honesty, man. Cause like, I know we putting a different type of passion into it. Mm -hmm. Okay, last question I want to ask. I know you get asked them this a million times every time somebody does an interview, but we want to know Who's been ringing your doorbell? Who's been calling your phone? Who wants to, who, huh? who, who you been working with? Who nah, man. Um, who BT been getting to? Well, in the last like two months, um, I mean, shit, I got Instagram pictures doc documented already. But like <laughs> Nas came through, Dr. Dre came through, J. Cole came through, Big Sean came through, Jill Scott came through. Um, Man, mad people, bro. Just mm -hmm. been working like nonstop, just idea after idea, man. Um, problem, Sage the Gemini. Um, I know I'm leaving a million people out, but just like a lot of incredibly talented people, man, that, that inspired me.